Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. And welcome to a new portion of the show I like to call Raiders of the Story. This is where I take a popular nostalgic show and look over the first few episodes to see if it still holds up. With that said, Teenage Mutant fucking Ninja Turtles! As you all know, I loved Ninja Turtles growing up. I was a hero and a half shell junkie. But now that I'm older, is the show really as good as I remember it? We know the movies definitely have flaws, but what about the television show that turned these reptiles into household names? I mean, after they were already household names. Well, I'm gonna look at the first episodes to find out. The ones from the three VHSs that we all watched in the 80s and 90s. So let's not waste any time and start with Turtle Tracks. Here we go, the very first episode of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It starts out in New York City. The crime wave is high with monkeys mysterious. All police and detectives are serious. And of course, the reporter leading the story on these crimes is good old April O'Neil. Ninjas. Oh, I just remember the reasons I love her so much. One on the left and one on the right. These incisions could only have been made with a samurai sword. And look at this rope. This can only be the work of ninjas, the ancient band of Japanese warriors. And how can you tell that from the rope, Professor? Well, look for yourself. It's made in Japan. Whoa, that shut me up. So we see the Shredder watches the reporters through a secret camera as he sends the cast of Mad Max the Musical to put a stop to their story. We got a message for you from the big boss man. He wants you should stick to reporting fashion shows. Here, catch! Uh, bullshit. Would press that big wouldn't be able to fit in a pipe from Super Mario Brothers. But unfortunately, she forgot that she can't go through fucking walls and gets herself cornered. Sign off time, April O'Neil. Chill out, homeboy. But of course, our green friends come to save her as April can't believe her eyes. I don't know who you are, but, but thanks. You're not human. I can't handle this. So she wakes up in the turtle's home and passes out again. I wish she'd stop doing that. When she wakes up for a second time, the turtle's master, a rat named Splinter, explains who they are. The story of my young friends and I is really the story of a man named Hamato Yoshi. He says his name used to be Hamato Yoshi and he was the master of a martial arts clan known as the Foot in Japan. Until his enemy named Oroko Saki literally stabbed him in the back. So you plot to kill our honorable sensei. Their sensei, who looks like a scrotum massage ball, looks over the situation and says, Throw the bomb out! In disgrace, Yoshi fled to America. Penniless, he was forced to live in the sewers. Wait a minute, why did he go directly to the sewers? There's shelters in New York. And if he's penniless, how'd he get to America in the first place? And why doesn't he get a job? Those last two sentences are really flawed. Okay, so while living in the sewers with the rats, four baby turtles drop down the drain and he decides to take care of them as well. He seems to live a decent life, most likely stealing everything he possesses, but then he arrives home to a shock. It was a powerful mutagen. This is back in the day when science goo could just do anything. You can make up the most absurd reasoning that has no scientific logic, but it's science goo, so it flies. For example, let's see what happens when I take this jar of Philadelphia cream cheese and pour some science goo all over it. <gasps> Damn it! It always turns into a 12-inch talking doll of Dennis Miller. Science fucking sucks, man. Science fucking sucks. Hey, what if those crop circles are just ads for Target? So since the turtles had most recently been in contact with Splinter, they turned human. And since Splinter had most recently been in contact with the turtles, he turns... into a rat. Hey, what? Okay. He names them after the great renaissance painters, because lore knows the show has to teach kids something, and raises them in the art of ninjutsu. And that is how they became the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles! Trademark Splinter 1989! So they decide to help April out in discovering who's been committing all these crimes. But as you imagine, they don't fit in very well. Okay, we all know this gag. The woman overreacts and runs away screaming while- HOLY SHIT! What a twitch in your history, scum! Now back off! Nice and easy! 
Moses from Planet of the Apes says it's my right to own one of these things, and by God, I'm gonna exercise that right! So they get those famous trench coats and hats that of course fool everybody into thinking they're not turtles as they come across, for lack of a better name, the Ninja District. Ninja dry cleaners? Ninja shoe repairs? Ninja video rentals? Ninja dentist? Ow! You know what the funny thing is? These all sound like movie titles for like, a sci-fi channel Ninja Movie Week. Coming soon on Ninja Movie Week. Ninja dry cleaner, Ninja shoe repair, Ninja video rental, and Ninja dentist. Coming this week on Seafy S Y F Y That Wrestling Channel. So I guess the idea is that the ninjas work for the Shredder and hide in plain sight in the Ninja District, as the Shredder keeps a close eye on his enemies. This April O'Neil is getting closer to my operation. I blame myself. So do I. I should not have sent a punk to do a ninja's job. So April finds a security building in the Ninja District that just happens to be the headquarters of the Foot Clan. I got another scientific equipment company lined up, just waiting to be cleaned out. I found him! Send a camera crew to- Alright, send a camera crew to- mm, mm, mm. By any chance is that off of- Help! Street! So the turtles follow the clues to where April is being held, and they're attacked by the Foot Clan. Which it turns out is just a bunch of robots. Robots? Let's rock! Robots that still use ninjutsu weapons. Yeah, by this point I bet Shredder is seriously wondering why he didn't just put guns on these guys. Hell, even old ladies on the street seem to have guns in this world, and yet these guys are still fighting with sticks and arrows? Your alien technology is nice, but a bullet is still a bullet. Whoa, wait a minute. Hello! Looks like somebody's trying to cop a shell. No wonder she keeps getting kidnapped all the time. She's just looking for a turtle feel down. Uh, what are they doing down there? Did the foot in the middle of escaping suddenly decide to start sweating to the oldies? It's sweating time! but the foot escape underground and flood the rest of the building, as Splinter fears that the Shredder might also be his mortal enemy, Oroko Saki, which closes out our first episode and leads to the next one, entitled... What was the title of that one again? <laughs> oh, jeez, man! I mean, doesn't that hurt? Is he still wearing the sharp... I don't want to think about it, oh! I need an Ardennes Miller joke to get my mind off that. You know, other than the bombs they strap to their chest, I have absolutely no idea what makes the Palestinians tick. <laughs> I don't get it. So we start where the last episode left off, as the Turtles are trying to find the Shredder's giant vehicle called the Technodrome. What's a Technodrome, you might ask? That's a Technodrome! What the hell is the giant eye on the top of that thing for anyway? Is it really how the Shredder sees things? I always wanted to draw a little smiley face on there just to complete the image. I don't believe it! And yeah, I bet you didn't know the Technodrome was a stick shift either. We're finding out so much today. This is Krang. Reply to me at once. So the Shredder goes to visit Krang a talking tumor with arms that sort of sounds like that grandpa who can only eat applesauce. I have given you vast technical knowledge. And by the way, because people will kill me if I don't bring it up again, that is Uncle Phil playing the Shredder. And yes, it is hilarious to dub the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air over his voice. No voice on Earth could stop me. I'm going to tie this place up with so much litigation that your grandchildren are going to need lawyers. <laughs> So it turns out Krang is from another dimension called Dimension X, and all he wants from Shredder is, take a guess. A body. A body. A body. Body. A body. A body. So to sweeten the deal, Krang exchanges some information. He tells him that the Shredder could just use the mutagen that was used on the turtles also on his own henchmen. 
But suppose Yoshi had been near a more powerful animal. Mutate my own people. The possibilities are endless. I think I'll do it twice and then never again. Oh, the possibilities! So he steals two animals from the zoo and talks to his henchmen to see who's up for a night of ungodly genetic realignment. I need volunteers. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no way, not me, huh? I need two of you for an experiment. Uh, forget it. It will give you strength and powers undreamed of. So what? Yeah, this is what happens when Shredder uses Craigslist to get his henchmen. Wanted. Fools to join my giant mutant army of ninjas! Must like animals. So eventually he gets two volunteers and turns them into the mutants Bebop and Rocksteady. Meanwhile, the turtles investigate the zoo robbery and... Come across the Technodrome! Wait a minute! How come the police, while investigating the robbery, didn't just, oh, I don't know, look down the friggin' hole? Didn't they think that if they just took a peek for a second, maybe they'd come across a giant mechanical Fabergé egg of death? I mean, just look, guys! Master Splinter's walking stick! He must be in trouble. <laughs> if you want to see him again, you'll have to come in. So the turtles go inside and come across a bunch of death machines. So while fighting these killer appliances, Donatello says one of the strangest out-of-context lines ever. Ah! Turtles fight with honor! Turtles fight with honor! Yes, because a turtle would never knock out a robot's lights dishonorably. You should know that, audience. That's something the biker mice from Mars would do! <laughs> So they find a device that, I guess they assume is a bomb, get trapped in a corner with the supposed bomb, strap it to a wall praying it's a bomb, and once you know it, it happens to be a bomb. Turtles cheat with honor! They see that Splinter's been kidnapped, and the Shredder reveals himself, telling the truth about his backstory. It was I who made you what you are today! If not for me, Hamato Yoshi would never have left Japan! I followed him. Okay, where is the Shredder getting these cameras? I mean, it's one thing to have surveillance cameras, but they seem to be getting shots that nobody could get. I mean, is there just a foot cameraman walking around and everybody's too polite to point him out? I mean, seriously, dude, how are they getting these? Bebop, rock steady, destroy them! In hindsight, I really should have planned this out better. Come on, Splinter, we're checking out of this dump. So Bebop and Rocksteady try to blast him again, but the turtles trap them and leave them behind. Thus ends episode two as we begin the third episode, A Thing About Rats. This one starts with an inventor named Baxter Stockman, who's created these robots called Mausers that can apparently hunt down rats anywhere. You see, <laughs> there's no place for pests to hide from my Mausers. Get out of here! Get rid of all rats, huh? What, are you crazy? You want to drive me out of business? You want to make me a millionaire? Which is exterminator in the world, what's wrong with you? A short-sighted fool doesn't know what he's missing. <gasps> who are you? Someone who wants to produce your mouses on a vast scale. Now, really, folks, if you're approached by a person with a business proposition who looks like Darth Vader mixed with a cheese grater, you probably shouldn't do business with him. Just straight up common sense. So Stockman makes a bunch of these Mausers and the Shredder sends them out to kill Splinter. But the Turtles arrive in time to save him. Where'd these metal maniacs come from? Where do you think, Michelangelo? Trademark Baxter Stockman Inventions. A division of Shredder Co. So they go to April to see if they can figure out where to find this Baxter guy. We're looking for the genius who built this. His name is Baxter Stockman. That's all you've got to go on? A name? I mean, it's not like the internet's been invented yet. So she finds the information and the turtles go looking for him. But we also find out that they may not have much time. Don't you wish to see the fruits of your labor? No, I'm tired. Very well, go. He knows too much. Put him out of the way. I don't know, Shredder. This guy just made you a death weapon with a warthog, a rhinoceros, ninja robots, and not once asked any questions. I'd say this guy is worth keeping around. Oh, what do you want now? 
Again, the turtles save him in time and find out that the next bunch are being sent to April's apartment, where Splinter is also. Out of my way, Big Mouth! I don't like the sound of that. Ropes! Oh my god, the loss of innocent life! Lord knows how many innocent families were in there and now are suddenly dead! <laughs> oh my god, the impact this must have on our heroes! Boy, they sure don't build them like they used to! Inconsiderate bitch! What the hell would you say if you just saw the Hindenburg disaster? Uh-oh, spaghetti -o. The fuck's wrong with you? You are a terrible person. So they find where the Shredder's hiding as Michelangelo sneaks in and tries to stop the Master Control. And give Shredder some credit, this time he actually is using a gun. And now we can see why he never uses it. Oh, no. So Donatello reprograms the Mousers to tear down the house by simply pushing one button over and over, but the Shredder gets away again in the Technodrome. That's the end of the Mousers. Yes, but what about Michelangelo? Really, Splinter? You're gonna just stand there? One of your students might be dying, and you're not even gonna give a gasp of disbelief? That seems pretty soulless. <sighs> I never liked him anyway. I care not for the party dudes. But they see he's okay as we move on to our next episode, Hot Rotting Teenagers from Dimension X. Isn't that a funky title? And just sort of a side note here, most kids saw these first few episodes on VHS as they didn't run the first episodes on TV that often. We loved them and all, but there was one major problem with it. On this VHS, they got episodes 3 and 4 backwards. So they would show Hot Rodding Teenagers first before they would show the one with the Mousers. Now, with that in mind, just imagine you're a kid and you're watching this episode without any knowledge of the Mouser episode you just saw. But like, what if Baxter comes back? <laughs> Baxter won't be back for a long time, Michelangelo. The authorities didn't appreciate it when he tried to take over the city with his Mouser robots. And I didn't appreciate it when they ate my apartment! What the hell are they talking about?! I mean, who's Baxter Stockman, April's ex-husband?! Okay, well luckily the DVD has them in order, and this one begins with Donatello putting together the turtle van. Because, as we heard in the opening, Donatello does machines. No, not like that. I, you're gross. But Shredder has another plan. He's going to open up the portal to Dimension X and bring some of Krang's armies over. Which begs the question why he hasn't just done this before, but if I'm gonna point out the lacks in logic in this show, we're gonna be here forever. Two soldiers come out of the portal, but so do some rambunctious kids called the Neutrinos. Why is it they look like Vanilla Ice if they just got out of Tron? Oh, Daddy-O! This is one unhappy primitive society! Cool! Daddy-O, we are frozen! Oh my god, it's the worst combination possible! Beatniks and hippies! So after they get the van put together, the turtles find out that them and the neutrinos are on the same side. The neutrinos actually hate Dimension X, as it seems to be nothing but wars. What is this Dimension X? It's Grimsville. All the grown-ups ever do is fight! Us neutrinos are the only ones who like having fun, and most of the time the grown-ups won't let us! You don't know what it's like, living in a place where everybody wants to do you in, just for the crime of being young! <laughs> when will people realize the importance of Dimension X awareness? <laughs> what? But the Stone Warriors from Dimension X find them and try to hunt them down. We said we wouldn't let anyone hurt you and we mean it. Come on! Uh, guys, you may want to actually fire those weapons instead of just making laser sounds with your mouths. Pew! Pew pew pew! Pew! But the turtles escape and consult Master Splinter about what to do next. Neutrinos, we have got to stop Crane! Turtles, we gotta help him do it! Don't worry, Kala. We won't let anything happen to you. Whoa, I'm sensing some strange sporadic sexual tension in the sewers today. Turtles, fight with jailbait! So the turtles reached the Technodrome and... <laughs> Wait, how did they just drive the van hundreds of feet underground? What, are there like tours that go through there? And to your right, you'll see a giant Lego igloo. Ooh. So the turtles break in and start up a fight. 
There he is! He's the brains of this operation! Are you pondering what I'm pondering? Uh, Michelangelo! Uh, there's a barrel of silicone lubricant over there! Um, lubricant? Are you sure that wasn't intended for a previous episode? But the turtles have to leave to stop one of the Stone Warrior's weapons from destroying the city. They knock it out and head back home, which leads to the final episode in our story arc, Shredder and Splinter. How confusing. It starts out with the Shredder appearing on the Turtles' TV saying he has a device to turn the mutations back to their original form. You know something I never got? Why doesn't he just take that big fucking Technodrome and squash them? Alright dudes, let's go find the Shredder! <laughs> So they try to use one of the leftover neutrinos cars to get there. But that doesn't seem to work well. What now? Come on, who bought what this gelato? Oh, he's like? a junk. Uh, looks like we're out of fuel. What sort of juice does this crate take? Uh, plutonium, I think. Oh, terrific. Maybe we can get a tow to the nearest plutonium station. You don't just walk into a store and, and buy plutonium. So Donatello says he can whip up another form of transportation at Baxter's lab, but Bebop and Rocksteady find them and try to bash their brains out. Sorry, boys, we gotta build a parking lot where you're playing. Turtles, fight with cement! Come back and fight! So as the turtles finally make it to the Technodrome, the Shredder at long last constructs a body for Krang, and holy hell, who the fuck designed that? That is like the strangest, most bizarre... THING I'VE EVER SEEN IN MY LIFE! He looks like a mix between Dolph Lundgren and that weird giant from Goonies. I mean, was Boy George designing a wrestler? Now, wretched reptiles, you will face the wrath of Craig! While that's going on, April goes back to work to try and get a camera crew to film all the action. I'm trying to get a story for you! Trying? Four green maniacs are running loose in this town and you haven't brought me deadly squat! Whoa, hey, watch the language, pal! <laughs> Any further and we'd be in fiddly D territory! But luckily, she uses all her coaxing techniques to get what she wants. And by coaxing, I mean terrorist threats. It's a hyper turtle death ray! Now order me a news crew or I'll turn this whole place into a flaming rubble! She's, um, tenacious. So Krang makes himself bigger and gets ready to destroy the turtles. But just then, Donatello arrives with his new invention. Come on, guys! Welcome aboard the turtle blimp! Well, wait! So he took a piece of equipment the size of a couch and made a friggin' blimp out of it? He's like the MacGyver of gods! So two of them sneak into Krang's body and try to find the device to shrink him down. There it is! Let's cut it out of there! So this is the leader out of the four, huh? Hey, uh, have you ever thought about maybe... Yeah! So Crank shrinks down, but the Shredder whips out his ray and gets ready to turn them back into ordinary turtles. Well, gang, looks like it's back to the old pet shop for us! Far from it. Tonight I dine on turtle soup. With pillowy mounds of mashed potatoes. <laughs> so the ray is destroyed, but the turtles decide it's time to stop the Shredder once and for all. So Donatello, who did I mention does machines, figures out the alien technology and sucks the Technodrome itself into Dimension X. Turtles unrealistically master alien technology with honor. No! At last! I can conquer my home dimension! But I don't want to conquer this place! I want to conquer hers! <laughs> I love it when the Shredder is just a whiny bitch. That's when he's the funniest. I want to conquer hers! I'm an evil mastermind! Now give me my Earth! And those are the first five Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoons. Are they silly? Yes. But for what they're worth, they're kind of fun. There's a lot of good fourth wall jokes, and the animation on the action scenes is actually pretty impressive at the time. It's definitely clumsy, though. There's a lot of wrong voices coming out of the wrong turtles, and there's a lot of plot threads that also don't make a lot of sense. For the time, it was pretty good, but it's definitely age. However, for my money, I still got some good laughs and good action out of it. As kids' shows go, it's stupid, but it's enjoyably stupid, and a ton of fun to watch. 
If you ever feel nostalgic for some awesome turtle action, this is the place to go. So thanks for watching my first Raiders of the Story arc. I hope you enjoyed it, and hey, next month is January. You know what that means? Sequel month! That's the news, and I am out of here. <laughs>